We are back on our adventure of the Bible. We've been looking at the spirit world. Last time we talked about the angels of God. This time we're going to talk about hell's angels. Not the biker group. The actual hell's angels in the Bible. In Matthew 25, 41, Then shall he also say unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, and everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. Revelation 12, 7 and 8, And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought in his angels, and prevailed not, neither was their place found any more in heaven. Job 4.18, Behold, he put no trust in his servants, and his angels he charged with folly. So he charged some angels with folly. He calls some angels the dragon's angels. He calls some angels the devil's angels. And you might call these wandering angels. Jude 13 talks about wandering stars, and Revelation 1.20 refers to angels as stars. So you've got the elect angels, the angels of God in heaven, the angels who are for the Lord, but then you have hell's angels, the devil's angels. They're, they're wandering angels. And, you know, there is that motorcycle gang called the hell's angels, and they look pretty tough. And obviously a gang of them could kill you. If they run up on you, obviously they're gonna, you're dead. You're, they're going to kill you if they wanted to kill you. But, a, you know, a gang of kindergartners with knives and guns could kill you as well. Uh, you know, they could run over you with their bike. The Hells Angels, they could get mad at you and run you over with the bike. But so could an angry grandma. But, you see, this Hells Angels stuff, that's not being real men. Real men work and abide by the law and they treat people right. If you're so tough... Hold down a job, be faithful to your wife, take care of your kids, be a good influence to them, quit laying in the recliner, quit popping pills because you won't fight the pain of a work week. Do things honestly. That's what being a man is. The gangs are just overgrown babies that never grew up. And gangs like the Hells Angels, that's just, uh, that's just a picture of their rebellion. Their, their bike group. They're trying to be rebels and show the rebellion. There's also a bike gang called Widowmakers, where I live. Every time I see them riding bikes where I live, and I see them denim jackets that they got on that says Widowmakers, I think to myself, why would you brag about making a woman a widow? Why would you brag about making a child fatherless? It doesn't make you tough to kill somebody. It doesn't make you tough to go against God and rebel like the real hell angels did. And that's what we're going to talk about, the real hell's angels. Now, these hell's angels, they are a lot tougher than the motorcycle gang. Now, me and you could not take on a hell's angel in our own strength. We'd have to have the Lord to fight the battle. And... Let's talk about these hell's angels, these devil's angels. Number one, they are without excuse. And I showed you in Job 38 where they would have witnessed the creator create his creation. Our tour guide on this adventure, the Lord Jesus Christ, was in the beginning because he's before the beginning. You know, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. And the hell's angels, although they weren't hell's angels back then when this happened, they saw the Word speak everything into existence. You know, our tour guide in, the, in this adventure allowed the angels to see Him create. Imagine seeing God, seeing Him at work, and then you still go against him. You know, me and you can look around and clearly see the creation and it all points to a creator. So this makes us a fool and without excuse for not believing the Lord. Romans 1.20 says, For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, 
being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. You see, you can look around and see that there's a creator, and you're without excuse. Not only did the angels see the creation, they saw the creator and saw him create. How much more without excuse can you be if you are an hell's angel, one of the hell's angels? You know, that's one of the reasons I believe they're unredeemable. I mean, they didn't just, they don't just see the creation. They saw the creator and they saw him create everything. Just as the hell's angels are without excuse for rebelling, though, we are too. You know, the God who made heaven and earth is mindful of man. That was made a little lower than the angels. We got nothing to really offer him, yet he accepts what we offer him, and he offered up himself because we couldn't get salvation for ourselves. We're without excuse. The fallen angels are doubly without excuse. I dare say some wish they hadn't rebelled. And that brings me to the next point is, not only are angels without excuse, they want to look into salvation. They want to look into your salvation. In 1 Peter 1.12, it talks about the gospel, and it talks about how the angels desire to look into it. And they most likely want to get on our salvation, get in on our salvation, but Jesus Christ became a flesh and blood man to die for flesh and blood men. Angels are spirits, and they're male, but they're not flesh and blood men, you see. Jesus Christ came down, took on flesh, became a man to die for men, not for angels. I don't know this for sure, but I'd say out of the many angels who rebelled, some of them wish they hadn't rebelled. I'll bet they'll wish they hadn't rebelled when they finally get into their eternal place where they're going to be forever and ever and ever. And they would give all the stars in the universe to be where you are right now with the opportunity that you have to get saved and to live for God. You have such a great opportunity. What an opportunity you have. You have such an opportunity that an, a thousands and thousands year old fallen angel might trade places with you. Now, maybe, the, maybe all the hell's angels are like the devil and they got no remorse and they're just uh, waiting out their time. But I would imagine out of an innumerable amount of angels that sinned and rebelled, surely there's some of them that regret what they've done. And, you know, there's all kinds of people in hell that would love to switch places with you. Have the opportunity to get saved. Have the opportunity to live for God that you have. They would give all the stars in the universe. You've got every opportunity now to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ if you already haven't. Acts 16, 31, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved in the house. You have the opportunity right now to call upon the name of the Lord. Romans 10, 13. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. But when you end up in the place prepared for the devil and the hell's angels, you'll be just like them wanting to look into salvation. But you'll know that, it's, that you're without hope. You know, since the fallen angels are unredeemable like the devil, they carry out the wrong gospel. The devil and his angels will take comfort in the multitudes in hell. Ezekiel 32, 31. Just like Pharaoh was comforted over all his multitude slain by the sword. Pharaoh, a picture of the devil in hell. And the only comfort he's going to have is seeing all the multitude of people that he's damned. The only comfort they're going to get is seeing someone in hell with them. You see, so they bring a wrong gospel. Just like the devil. What does he bring? The wrong gospel. You know, they're without excuse. They want to look into salvation. And since they know they're unredeemable, they got the wrong gospel. In Galatians 1, 6 through 10, Paul says, I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel. You see, there's other gospels out there, which is not another, but there are be some that trouble you 
and would pervert the gospel of Christ. But though we are an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. As we said before, so say it now again. If any man preach any other gospel unto you than that ye have received, let him be accursed. For do I now persuade men or God, or do I seek to please men? If I yet please men, I shall not be the servant of Christ. So he said, but though we are an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. You see, there are angels going around with the wrong gospel. And all kinds of people claim to have talked to angels, got a new way of salvation from angels, got a new revelation from an angel, got a prophecy from, from an angel, YouTube videos everywhere saying that they were spoken to by an angel and they told them this and then that thing doesn't come to pass. Most of them is probably lying, didn't see an angel. But if they did, that doesn't surprise me because there are fallen angels with the wrong gospel. You know, Joseph Smith claims to be given the false teachings uh, that the Mormons have by the angel Moroni. Many of the cults had an angel that spoke to them. Alestra Crowley had supposedly talked to some type of spirit that looked kind of like an alien would. Oh, and over there in 1 Kings 13, the old prophet claimed to have talked to an angel. And the angel told him something that was contrary to the word of God. So if he really did talk to an angel, that would have been a hell's angel. But notice how the angel in 1 Kings 13, though there probably wasn't an angel that talked to him at all, he was just lying. The angel said something that was contrary to God in this story. In 1 Kings 13, 17 through 18, the young prophet says this. The young prophet, he's doing what the Lord wants him to do. He's just had a great victory. And look what he says. The young prophet says, For it was said to me by the word of the Lord, Thou shalt eat no bread, nor drink water there, nor turn again to go by the way that thou camest. That's what the Lord told him. Don't eat bread or drink water there, or turn again by the way that thou camest. Pretty simple commands. Then look what the old prophet comes and does. He said unto him, I am a prophet also as thou art. And an angel spake unto me by the word of the Lord, saying, Bring him back with thee into thine house, that he may eat bread and drink water. But he lied unto him. So he's claiming an angel came and told him this stuff. You know, it doesn't matter if there really was an angel or if he lied about the entire thing. If an angel or supposed angel or someone who claims to have talked to an angel says something that goes against the Word of God, then you take the Word of God instead. I mean, who are you going to listen to, a hell's angel or the Word of God? You know, the hell's angels, they're just bitter about what they got going on. So just like the devil, they're going to try to wreak havoc. You're going to have to get familiar with what God said, though, or you're going to be tricked by an angel. You know, they had some show long ago called Touched by an Angel. You're going to be tricked by an angel. You may get touched by the wrong angel. And they got the wrong gospel because, number four, the Word of God isn't a priority to them. In 2 Corinthians eleven fourteen through 15, it says, And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. You know, I, I believe that would go for the devil's mortal false teachers and his spiritual false teachers, hell's angels, his ministering spirits. They pretend to be for righteousness and truth, but they are for unrighteousness and deception. And there are lying spirits in the Bible. 1 Kings 22, 19 through 23. For example, it says, And he said, Hear thou therefore the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting on his throne, and all the host of heaven, standing by him on his right hand and on his left. And the Lord said, Who shall persuade Ahab, that he may go up and fall at Ramoth Gilead? And one said on this manner, and another said on that manner, and there cometh forth a spirit, and stood before the Lord, and said, I will persuade him. And the Lord said unto him, Wherewith? And he said, I will go forth, and I will be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. And he said, Thou shalt persuade him, and prevail also. Go forth and do so. Now therefore, behold, the Lord hath put a lying spirit 
and the mouth of all these thy prophets. And the Lord hath spoken evil concerning thee. So the lying spirit, if you know the story, gave a positive message to the false prophets. A message of false victory and false hope for the wrong thing. You know, just like the lying devils on TBN. All those TV preachers. Positive message. No truth. Uh, I've noticed these false teachers, they will either give an overly positive message or an overly doom and gloom message of fear. They want you at ease and thinking everything is hunky-dory with how you're living or they want you in complete fear with no faith in God. That isn't the Holy Spirit. Because 2 Timothy 1, seven, For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. No doubt the wicked angels can see you, just as the good ones. No doubt they want you... If you're, if you're lost, they want to keep you lost. If you're saved, they want you not living for God. But they can see you, and that's why Paul said that the woman needs power on her head... Because of the angels in 1 Corinthians 11. They're lying spirits. The word of God isn't a priority to them. They're in, they're in attack mode when it comes to the word of God. And you know, back there in Genesis 6, they took wives whom they chose. That's the fifth thing they have. Wives whom they chose. In Genesis 6, 1 through 5, it says, And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair, and they took them wives of all which they chose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh, yet his days shall be an hundred and twenty years. There were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that, when the sons of God, there's your sons of God, match that with Job 38, match that with Job 1 and 2, the sons of God is a Old Testament reference to the angels. Now, me and you are sons of God the moment we believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, but they weren't sons of God in the Old Testament. Saved people were not sons of God in the Old Testament. Now, corporately, Israel was a son, called a son and a daughter. But you, get, you don't become a son of God until you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and his payment on the cross, his death, burial, and resurrection. So these sons of God came into the daughters of men, and they bare children to them. The same became mighty men which were of old, men of renown. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. So these fallen angels that rebelled, they took human wives, and they are faced with dying like men. Psalm 82, 6 and 7 says, I have said, ye are gods, and all of you are children of the Most High, but ye shall die like men and fall like one of the princes. It seems the angels from this time, for back there in Noah's day, are already suffering torments in hell. In 2 Peter 2, 4 through 6, it says, For if God, if, for if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell, and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment, and spared not the old world, but saved Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the word of the ungodly, and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them with an overthrow, making them an ensample unto those that after should live ungodly. So you got the phrase angels that sinned that are cast down to hell and changed of darkness reserved unto judgment. You got that in the same breath as and spared not the old world, but saved no the eighth person. Once again, connecting those angels that sinned with Noah's day because they were the sons of God of Genesis 6. Also, Jude connects them with Sodom and Gomorrah going after strange flesh, just like the fallen angels did. 
So these spirits in prison down there in hell, they're just waiting for judgment. That's the next thing. They took them wives whom they chose. They had a good little time there. The pleasures of sin only last for a season. Maybe a little bit longer season if you're an angel. But it's just for a season. And then, then you're just waiting for judgment. That's the next thing. They're waiting for judgment. It seems the angels that took on flesh in Noah's day died like men. But you still have angels falling in the spirit world even now. And they're going to fall later. As you can see in Revelation 12, I think we're... You know, he, his tail draws the third part of the stars. I think that's yet future there, not not actually the the fallen angels that fell with him back in, in between Genesis 1 and 1 and 1 2. I think that's a future fall. And I think that there's angels falling in the spirit world. I'm, I'm just, I'm speculating. And they just roam around freely, deceiving and causing havoc. You know, that's just speculation. And a lot of this study of the spirit world is speculation. But the hell's angels that haven't hit hell yet, they don't care about the word. They're just trying to raise as much hell as they can until it's time for them to be tormented. They're just waiting for judgment. The ones in hell's waiting for judgment. The ones not in hell's waiting for judgment. They're in the same boat as what the Bible calls devils. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, I'm not 100% certain that the devils that we read about in the Bible, I'm not 100% certain they aren't just a degenerated angel that's already fallen. Quite possibly they are. I tend to think devils in the Bible are something completely different than fallen angels entirely, but I never rule out the idea that the spirit of fallen angels eventually just degenerates down to devils. I'm not going to just... Put, put away the idea, but I think the devils are something different entirely. But devils are waiting for judgment and torment, just like the fallen angels. In Matthew 8, 28, 29, it says, And when he was come to the other side into the country of the Gergesenes, there made him two possessed with devils, coming out of the tombs, exceeding fierce, so that no man might pass by that way. And behold, they cried out, saying, What have we to do with thee, Jesus? Thou Son of God, art thou come hither to torment us before the time? You see, they're just waiting for the torment. They're waiting for their judgment. In Jude, verse 6, it says, And the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. See, all the unclean spirits, the devils, the lying spirits, the fallen angels... They're just simply waiting for judgment and torment. When it comes to a lot of people on this earth, they're basically doing the same thing. They're waiting for judgment and torment, raising as much hell until they hit the judgment and don't even realize it. In Hebrews 9.27, it says, And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment. If you're not saved and you don't got no plans of getting saved, you're basically waiting around for the judgment. And you're not promised another second. You could die right now. And as it is appointed unto man once to die, after this, the judgment. All these people live in the high life, getting all this glory down here. They're just heaping up earthly treasures and treasures for the last days, and it will just be burned up in the fire. You know, everybody you hear obsessing over Taylor Swift, but if she doesn't get saved... She's just raising as much hell as she can until the judgment. Getting as much young girls in rebellion as she can until the judgment. And that's what her whole music career is, career is, is rebellion. And this is just making her judgment worse and worse and worse. In Revelation 20... Verse 12, it says, And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life, and the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. That's the white throne judgment. You know, the angels, they're waiting for judgment. 
And the next thing, they're white throne attendees. They're going to be white throne attendees. They're going to be at the white throne. You're going to be at the white throne. You're going to see them. You already got, if you're saved, you would have already been judged at the judgment seat of Christ before you get to the white throne. And in 1 Corinthians 6, 3, it says, Know ye not that we shall judge angels? How much more things that pertain to this life? That's your future. If you're saved, you're going to judge angels. If you're saved, you will judge angels one day, the fallen angels. They're going to be at the white throne. They're going to be white throne attendees and on the receiving end of judgment. Let's look at the white throne judgment, Revelation 20, 11 through 15. And I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. I don't know how a fallen angel feels, but I know I'd be feeling tremendous amount of regret he went from praising God in Job 38 to spending eternity in a lake of fire one day. He was one choice away from eternity with God. You are also one choice away from eternity with God. Maybe you already made the choice. In 2010, I made the choice to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. I, I knew I was a sinner. I knew I was going to hell. And I knew the gospel. That's all you need to know to make the choice. And Romans 3.23, it says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. You've sinned just like those fallen angels have sinned. Your sin separated you from God. And you're going to die just like those angels that left their first estate died like men. Romans 6.23, For the wages of sin is death. You're going to be judged like those, just like those fallen angels. Hebrews 9, 27, But as it is appointed unto man once to die, but after this the judgment. But the difference is, Jesus Christ died for you. He became a flesh and blood man, but also the Son of God, God in the flesh, and he did that for you. He, was, he, he shed his blood. It was God's blood that he shed on the cross. He was buried and he was resurrected. That means he got up out of the grave. He didn't stay dead. That's the gospel. He became your sins. When he was on the cross, he became your sins. 2 Corinthians 5.21 says, For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. The Lord Jesus Christ was made sin. He, he became sin even though he had never sinned before. And he did that for you. And he wants to save you. And all he wants you to do is come to him right now and accept the payment. Romans 10, 13, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's all you got to do. It's not about living right. It's not about all these other things that people make it out to be. And it's so much more simple than people make it out to be. God wrote a check in his blood. And he's offering you the check. And he just wants you to take it. And once you take it, your sins are paid for forever. And it's so easy to just accept the payment. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Like the night I got saved, I, I just got down on my knees. I said, God, no, I'm a sinner. I know I'm going to hell, but I know you died on the cross for me. I want to be saved. Please save me. I'm putting my trust in what you did on the cross to be my payment for sin. I said something like that. And it's not about what I said. It's about what, it's about the heart belief that took place when I said it. So if you're not saved, don't end up in a place prepared for the devil and his angels.